Uh, today, we have a 40-year-old male who presents to the emergency department with fevers and severe back pain. Workup in the emergency department included lab studies that show a significantly elevated white blood cell count. The white blood cell count in our body is a marker of infection. The patient's back pain was so severe that they could not even move on the stretcher without screaming in pain, so well above the normal kind of aches and pains that we sometimes have in our back. So the first question I have is what laboratory study should we order? And then the second question I have is what studies should we order imaging wise to diagnose this patient? I'm gonna kind of give this answer away so I can show you guys the imaging study and you can tell me what you think. So we did order an MRI of the thoracic and lumbar spine and here are the results of that. This is the MRI without contrast. Now I'll just come to the midline and let you study this picture right here. Here are the contrasted images coming through to the middle of the spine right here. Going through. Okay. Lumbar spine images are here. Contrasted lumbar spine images are here. I failed to mention the patient's neurological evaluation. We did mention that the patient was very uncooperative with exam. They were in so much pain that really it was very difficult to examine them, but it's very important to get a neuro exam in this patient. So when we did examine them, uh, the patient had significant weakness in the legs and it was unclear as to whether or not they could move the legs or if it was just pain limited. But on, um, on sensory examination, the patient did have decreased sensation in uh, both legs. Um, upon further questioning, the patient has had some episodes of bowel and bladder incontinence as well. These symptoms have been going on for about five days, but have been getting rapidly progressive. In fact, the reason why the patient came in today is because they could no longer walk on their own. So the questions I have in this case are, one, what laboratory studies do we need to order? Two, we discussed the imaging that was ordered, but what did you see on that imaging? Three, what is the next step in this patient's course and how quickly does these things need to happen? And last but not least, what are the conditions that led to this patient having this problem and why would they have this problem? Stay tuned for the full video explanation tomorrow and make sure to follow me to get that video. So we presented yesterday a 40-year-old male with severe back pain and fevers who came into the emergency department with five days of rapidly progressive weakness in his legs to the point where he could no longer walk. Um, here is the MRI findings. Going right back here. So I'm gonna talk about spine anatomy for a minute so you understand what we're looking at. But basically what I explain to patients are the squares are the bones that are in the spine. And then the uh, discs are the spaces that are in between each one of our bones in our spine. And they're squishy little cushions that allow shock absorption and movement in our spine. So when we're looking at an MRI, these are the bones, these squares, and then these are the discs or the cushions. The spinal cord sits behind the spine um, and is surrounded by the fluid which bathes the spinal cord itself. So down here it gets kind of distorted. So we see the spinal cord coming down through here and then something is pushing it back up against the back part of the spine. So we see something very abnormal right here. And then this, this space here looks a little odd as well. So on the contrasted images, we see this abnormal looking uh, thing anterior to the cord that does enhance or picks up contrast. So what that is, is what's called an epidural abscess. So the disc actually is infected and pus has come out of the disc and is inside of the spinal canal causing spinal cord compression. The lumbar MRI actually shows a small abscess here as well with some infection in the disc here, but that's not terribly compressive. So to go through the questions, one, the labs we ordered is a, a white blood cell count which shows infection in the bloodstream. 
Two, we order blood cultures to check for bacteria in the bloodstream, which hers were positive. And three, we order ESR and CRP, which are markers of inflammation in the blood, and those were also very high. So the MRI findings and the laboratory studies suggest that this patient has infection in her spine at multiple discs in her spine, including an epidural abscess uh, from T7 all the way down to T9. So this is a medical emergency because of the leg weakness that the patient has. So the patient needs urgent surgery to decompress the spine. I took the patient and was able to remove all the pus anterior to decrease the spinal cord compression and the patient got immediate relief of their neurological symptoms. The patient will need to be treated for the symptoms depending on the organism and I asked the question of what can cause this and the most common cause of bacteria in the bloodstream is actually IV drug use. So you can actually introduce bacteria through needles into the bloodstream, which can seed the heart, seed the spine, and seed other organs in their body to cause serious symptoms. Hope you learned something today. Have a good one.